Well, praise the Lord, everybody. It's your boy, Pastor Kyron Shorter, your IPYP Vice President, Director of the Alumni Association. I want to welcome you in, y'all. It is the year 2022, and so far, we're off to a great start. Hopefully, uh, your families are in a man, uh, uh, blessed state. Hopefully, you are enjoying what God is doing thus far, his favor upon your lives, your ministries, and your endeavors. And we want to welcome you into our broadcast tonight. Amen. On behalf of the Alumni Association, amen. We want to welcome our entire IPYPU family in. Shout out to our president, Evangelist Freedom Morrison. Uh, welcome to the Alumni Hour, y'all. This is an opportunity for us to, amen, uh, uh, have dialogue, have conversation, amen. Most importantly, bring edification to the entire body of Christ through the lens of grown folk, all right? So tonight, we hope to endeavor to have a grown folks conversation, amen, concerning kingdom affairs, things uh, that are necessary for us to empower and equip a, great, a generation to greater works. And uh, I'm so honored that we have some special guests with us tonight night honored and hopefully uh you are in uh, uh in a good place amen and your spirit is open for us to dive deep into some things that are pressing uh so do me a favor hit that share button hit the like button hit the subscribe button all things ipypu hit us up on uh the facebook of course uh hit us up on instagram i think we're on tiktok amen uh we even have a brand new app so definitely download the new ipypu app so that you amen can be informed of all the exciting things going going on in the IPYPU. And so certainly without further ado, let's get going. Hopefully you are, amen, just amped and excited as I am for this conversation. Long overdue, amen. And I'm excited to have with us tonight our programming director who's going to be our co-host uh, for tonight and the person of Elder Stuart Styles of St. Louis, Missouri. want to welcome him in. What's going on, everybody? Praise the Lord, everyone. How are you? My name is Elder Stuart Styles. I am your programming director. Um, I'm all the way from here from St. Louis, Missouri. Shout out to the Midwestern District Council. Hey, Amen. I'm excited <laughs> to have this conversation with you, man. Hey, man, I'm excited for you being here. Excited about the programming for this upcoming year, 2022. We're oh, excited man. about how God is moving in the IPYPU. Uh, yeah. You got any 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 teasers for us? Anything we should be on the lookout for? Man, I'm just telling you right now, you guys just really need to first, if you really want to know what's about to go down in the IPYPU and beyond, first and foremost, you need to download that app. You need to go to your Google Play Store. You need to go to your Apple Store and download IPYPU Portal. It's right there. You can download it, sign up, and I promise you, and everything you need to know is going to be right there. I'm talking about classes, sessions, concerts. I mean, uh, community events, connections, scholarships, giveaways. You guys need to know what's going on, and the first thing you can do is connect with us on our social media and definitely download the app. That's right, y'all. Download the app. You get it now. Google Play Store, uh, I, um, iTunes Store, uh, iStore. Uh, grab that store. app. Yeah, iTunes Store. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, grab that app today and get connected with us. Get connected with young people all throughout the world, literally. Amen. Let's get to it. Amen. We're so excited tonight. We're discussing the explicit balance. Mm -hmm. uh, how much is too much in ministry? And um, this is a conversation that we are long overdue. But again, tonight we're going through the door and hopefully you're poised with your questions. Hopefully you're ready to interact with us tonight. But we have two dynamic guests with us tonight um, to join in on the conversation. Uh, the first that we're bringing up is Evangelist Cherie Isabel. Amen. We thank God for her dynamic ministry. Ooh. Amen. From hey, she killed it in Philadelphia at the empowerment conference. Oh, I don't know if y'all were there. God. She set this administration off the right way back in Philly 19. Go find that, find that on YouTube, find that somewhere. Amen. Welcome, Evangelist. Share something about yourself with us. Thank you so much. Of course, I'm Evangelist Sheree Isabel. I am from Nashville, Tennessee. I attend Greater Christ Temple Church, where my pastor is the preacher machine himself, the Honorable Bishop Sherman L. Merritt Sr. Uh, I am, I call myself a country girl. Y'all may hear me twang my words or have a country <laughs> saying every now and then. I'm a country girl, uh, married to a wonderful man. I call him my chocolate drive, brother Quentin Isabel. We've been married, uh, this year will be 13 years. Uh, I am a part of, uh, Dr. Bobby Jones Nashville Super Choir. I'm, I am one of his lead singers. Oh, tell uh, Edward I said, hey. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, you know them. Yeah, they're my friends. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but I'm a part of the super choir. If, if anybody got to uh when Bobby Jones Gospel was on BET, I got to spend the last two seasons with uh Dr. Jones on BET. Uh also 
uh, I got a couple of things going on. Uh, yeah. I got a, um, my husband and I have our own internet radio station is a bell radio. Make sure y'all go to there for some good gospel music. Uh, okay. my show is on there. The Sheree Isabel show. Uh, I have a single coming out that I'm getting ready to drop here. Probably in the next, uh, month or so we come to worship you. Also, if you ever visit Nashville and come to the African American music museum, I am on one of the exhibits with Dr. Bobby Jones and the Nashville super choir. So your sister is etched in African music, uh, music history. So, uh, just got a few things going on. Hey, that's exciting, y'all. Hey, show some love. Give me some hearts. Just got a few things. Yeah, said, some like, likes. Hey, like man. Come on, let's support our sister. You <laughs> said a few. And she didn't list it like 15 <laughs> things. Amen. <laughs> and a preacher on top of that. Amen. We thank God for you. Welcome into the broadcast, y'all. Please, y'all, please let's support our sister and an alumni, y'all, an alumni of yeah. IPYP. Welcome tonight. Our next panelist you want to bring in tonight is the elder. Roger Amen. Green. Get ready for this. Amen. Uh, from Charlotte, North Carolina. Amen. Preacher, author, businessman. Amen. Motivational speaker. Does a little bit of everything. Amen. Welcome tonight, sir. God bless you. God bless you all. So glad to be here. Amen. Amen. Tell us a little bit about what you got going on. Well, I don't know if I can top that introduction of <laughs> a resume. I mean, a that's resume. talk about resume of resumes. And so I'm excited to be with you all. First, before I even introduce myself, I want to thank uh, Evangelist Frida Morrison and our yeah. wonderful vice president and, and program director who has uh, given us the opportunity to come on. But I'm Elder Roger Green Jr. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. We call it the Queen City. And I'm just so excited to be here. I'm a preacher, teacher, expositor of the word of the Lord. I'm a life coach, uh, author. I'm a business owner here in the city of Charlotte. And so I give a good shout out to the 58th Episcopal District, the North Carolina State Council, our bishop, Bishop Marion E. Wright Sr. is our diocesan, as well as our council chairman, uh, Maxie Dobson, suffering Bishop Maxie Dobson, who serves as also our general treasurer. And so I'm just grateful to be here. PDT Charlotte is my church home. My father, suffering Bishop Roger Green Sr. is the pastor. So I'm just elated to be here. I've been, uh, you know, it's great to be on the alum side of things here at the IPYPU. I've served as team director for the Carolina State Council, vice president, uh, president for about 15 years. And so <laughs> it's it's been a lot of IPYPU events and involvement uh, over the years. And I'm just grateful to be home. <clears throat> Wow. Wow. Again, welcome to you both. As y'all can see, we have some dynamic IPYP alumni. That's the goal of the Alumni Association is to bring exposure to dynamic young people who have grown up and matriculated through the IPYP who are doing great things in the kingdom of God. And so we thank God for y'all being with us. Let's dive into tonight's conversation. Now, Elder Green, you talked about being around this thing. Amen. For for a little bit of time now. What has changed? <laughs> what has not changed? I mean, uh we're in a new climate. And so, you know, I guess I have this question for both of y'all, you know, new climate, greater visibility. Amen. It seems at a moment in a click, amen. Any moment can go viral. Is the camera killing the church? Mm. Mm. I think what I've noticed it has changed is we've been able to get together more frequently. And I love that, uh, you know, growing up in the PAW, you know, you look forward to the summer convention as well as the midwinter convention which was heavily dominated by IPYPU. And so it was only those moments. Uh, and then when Elder Collier came in and in, in implemented the empowerment conference, it threw that third layer of involvement. But what I'm loving and what I'm seeing is through things that we're seeing through the alumni, through the ministerial alliance, through the IPYPU teams, is giving us more frequency to not only just fellowship and be with each other, but it's giving other voices an opportunity to engage. I think as I was, uh, you know, the president of the state and president of the region and involved on the national, the biggest dilemma that we had was how do we get so many people involved in these limited amount of time? Mm. Uh, and so what I've seen and what I've loved and I applaud this administration for is capitalizing on what others might have seen as the pandemic shutting us down is giving us more of an opportunity to be more of a family. And I've learned more about people that I never knew about and say, okay, I need to have them in the Carolinas. I need to get them near near me. 
I need to glean on their experience and anointing. And so that's what I think I, I've noticed most that has changed. Yeah. yeah. You're definitely alumni because you dated yourself when you said midwinter. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an <a> OG. <laughs> you know, but to you, Evangelist uh, Sheree, is there is there a blessing and a curse with the exposure now that the church and ministry is getting? Um, there was a time when we we would have loved to be able to get our church choir on Bobby Jones. Now, with the platforms that we have, you know, um, it seems as if the sacred nature of our worship experience is, you know, kind of any moment is church gone wild. And so our altar calls are memes now, um, you know, is the camera killing us? Um, I would probably state it this way. Now, I'm still kind of a new family member to uh, the PAW and IPYPU because um, I've just been with um with Bishop Merritt for about, again, thir about 13 years. Mm -hmm. But I would probably state it this way as the saying, um, I forget the quote, but said that these are the best of times and the worst of times. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we have lost some of that sacredness, uh, even as far, um, and when you pose the question, I even thought about how even people's worship um, sometimes is intruded upon because mm -hmm. now you um, if someone is genuinely trying to get a breakthrough it, you know, they're, they're being made fun of on social media. So I would say um, from the aspect of being able to literally reach, I mean, it has the possibility and the potential to uh, a video or service can reach millions now, which is part of our commission to go into the world and take the gospel to the world. But then uh, on the backside of that, the worst of times, I think we have lost uh, some of the purity and some of the sacredness of our worship. Um, people are more concerned. And uh, I don't know if you guys have seen it. There was a, a, a meme. <laughs> there was a meme out that had the top picture of a lot of young people at the altar. And then the bottom picture was young people or children. Everybody was on their phone. Mm -hmm. And the meme said something to the effect of, the top picture is uh, how I receive the Holy Ghost or uh, the power that I remember. I, I know I'm not I'm not quoting it exactly. And then uh, and then you have this bottom. It's, it's like everybody uh, is worried about, you know, trying to be viral. You know, of course, we all know the incident with the pastor um, just a few days ago. And mm -hmm. some say that uh, it was just somebody trying to make a viral moment. Now, I don't know what the intent of the heart was. I can't speak to that. Um, but that was put out there that, you know, pastors are just trying to find a viral moment. So I think we, as the body of Christ, we really have to be careful. Um, are you, we want to make sure that we're really, are we trying to really minister to souls or are we just trying to go viral? Before we jump into what evangelist Isabel uh, <laughs> said, um, uh, before, we, before we dive into that, um, I, I want to know, and just from a pastoral perspective, because I had a conversation with my pastor on, you know, I was like, like he, he was very, he's a young pastor, but he was very slow to move when it came to the cameras and putting things on social media. Like he put bits and pieces out now, but he was saying that uh, he was talking about uh, the world or the people outside the church not understanding the contents of a pastoral message. Hmm. So do you, uh, being evangelist and, you know, Pastor Green and being in a, a, a in a temple moment, do you believe that sometimes the camera um, can misinterpret a pastoral temple moment and it's misconstrued to the world? Um, Pastor Green, can you start? Yeah, I think it definitely can. And I think my, my father does a great job of communicating with our social media staff as well as our technology staff, uh, letting us know when there is a pastoral moment when you know this is something that can be aired and broadcast to everybody and then this is what i just exclusively want for the body and so typically uh typically what he does on sunday mornings sunday mornings are more evangelistic in nature he, he, he doesn't do any of the house cleaning on sunday morning uh it's it's evangelistic it's showing them to the cross come to jesus uh but wednesday and other moments may be moments where it's it's you know, we're instead of broadcasting on Facebook, we're going to do it on Zoom or we're going to do it in another medium that we don't broadcast. And so I think leaders being conscious from that perspective, recognizing that we have to put forth a, a monicum of excellence in everything that we do. 
And so we have to be conscious that every time I open my mouth, there's weight, there's a responsibility. Uh, there are those that are watching that may not necessarily be watching uh, for clarity that may be watching to ensnare us. And so we just have to be vigilant and be sober and, 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 and watchful and mindful uh, from that perspective. Uh, Evangelist. Uh, I, I mean, that that was absolutely awesome, Pastor Green. Um, and if more if more leaders would do that, it would probably cut down on a lot of foolishness, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's just a lot of foolishness. And I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just country. I'm, you know, so no, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if, if more people would follow that model of Pastor Green's father, I mean, it really would. Uh, I was thinking about, I won't call the name. There was a well-known gospel singer that's a pastor that was drugged through the mud yeah. because, um, and you guys probably can pick up, I don't, I'm not going to call the name, but she was drugged through the mud. Uh, she was addressing her church and someone videotaped that and it went viral and people drug her through the mud because she spoke against certain lifestyles. So um, I, I think if more, again, if more people would follow that model and be cognizant, I mean, uh, one thing, and this is a personal prayer of mine, I have been praying that God uh, and the way we used to say it at my childhood church, the pastor would say, crown my head with wisdom and knowledge, but not just only wisdom and knowledge. But Lord, give me wisdom, knowledge and understanding. We yeah. have to understand how these platforms work. And even those of us that are preachers, uh, we have to be have wisdom on. Now, if you just want to say what you want to say and don't mind, uh, you're going to be like Nene, be like, I said what I said. That's fine. <laughs> but, but if if you uh i mean we have to pray for wisdom you can't yeah. just get up there and say and and then a lot of uh you know I, the, especially the way some of uh, 70s and babies 70s and 80s babies grew up a lot of what our forefathers talked about over the pulpit and said oh my gosh we can't say that now right. you you cannot say that you I, I, and i'm not i'm not talking about um taking down on the word of god i'm talking about our delivery of things that's what's catching us up mm. is our delivery you know you can preach against sin but i mean do you have to add all the extra stuff and all the extra adjectives and all the you know uh, the extra name calling and i mean we, mm. we really have to make sure that we are speaking and operating uh as elder said in excellence but not only excellence, but make sure we're speaking and operating in wisdom and in love. Amen. Wow. wow. What do we say, though, to those who say that the church shouldn't take their cue for what offends the world? You know what I mean? How do we how do we bridge that gap? You know, how much is too much as it relates to, you know, the word of God is a word of God. And, you know, should a pastor I know we want to use wisdom. But what is that line? <laughs> and, and 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 what is that what is that what is that gear that we get, amen, uh, uh to pastors to see that we still are living in a society where we have cultural sensitivities without telling them expressly that they can't preach what the Bible says. What is that line? I think it starts relationally. I think people can accept virtually anything you say and maybe even saying it in a way that they normally wouldn't accept it once you've built that rapport with them. And so where I think the church misses it is sometimes we elevate ourselves as leaders as being untouchable to the community. And then we think we can just say whatever we want to say. Mm. And so I think that that's where going into it, we've already offended. We've already, uh, you know, turned people off. We've already gotten them to a place that we haven't even built that rapport with them yet. Uh, so they're not going to hear our message. And so I'm really big about not being counterproductive. You know, when I speak, I want it to resonate and to connect. I want it to be able to be uh, when I speak the word of God, that whether you are a sinner or a saint, you can say, you know, I, I can identify with where Roger has been because Roger has always been uh, good at heart, meaning that, you know, I've came in love. You know, there's some conversations that I say to some guys uh, in the in the city that I can have hard conversations with them and I can say it raw, but they know like that dude loves the community. That dude loves our people. We've seen him work 20, 30 plus years in the heart of the hood. And so when people see that, they know, listen, we don't touch PDT. We don't touch that church that's on the corner in the middle of the hood. 
because they do some great things. And so whatever he says is coming from the Lord. And so I pride myself in that rapport that, that I've built with sinners and saints. And so I guess that's a long answer to say mm -hmm. before we can talk any kind of way to people, we just have to build rapport and, and do it in love. And when people see the love, they genuinely will respect it and, and take what you say is as, uh, as, as at face value. Man, this is awesome. Y'all go ahead. Again, she's going to use oh, well, I mean, I was just going to say, I think leaders everywhere need to reevaluate, um, it, it wore out or it would hurt to reevaluate your delivery and your approach mm -hmm. is what you're saying seasoned with love. Is it seasoned with grace? Is it seasoned with mercy? Is it seasoned with wisdom? Cause y'all let's just be real. Sometimes folks say stuff and you'd be like, you really <laughs> didn't have to say that. It was <laughs> totally, un it was unnecessary to put, just say what the word says, but you know, is it helpful? Is it, is it going to cause repentance? Is your, are your words going to cause conviction? I mean, it's just, um, and, and y'all, I, I, the Lord's just kind of been having me on this, on this thing. If we truly study, like, I think it's Romans chapter number 14 about how to handle, and I know that's geared more towards the body of Christ, but how to handle people and how to consider each other's faults. Um, cause I mean, cause sometimes leaders will, will preach and you forget that back in the day you slung weed and you did drugs and, you know, and we're so hard on people. You know, that's that's what I have encountered and experienced. Sometimes uh, uh, the church world, we're, we're so hard on the unbelievers. But I just I just think we need to reevaluate our approach to things. If you look, even look at the word of God, Jesus never handled every situation and every individual the exact same way. Amen. You know, with, with the woman called an adultery and rolled on the ground, told her to go and sin no more. Uh, you know, uh, with Zacchaeus, he told him, come down out of the tree. I'm coming to your house. So so he never. And then, you know, with the Pharisees, I was I listened to try to listen to my word every day. Uh, he, he told who was that Herod? He said, go tell that fox. You know, so he had he 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 had uh, appropriate moments. And I just think, you know, again, if leaders would reevaluate and really pray for wisdom, pray for grace and that their words are seasoned in love. Yeah, that was good. Um, I want to take a, a short, quick uh, little break to say, hey, thank you guys for coming in. This is explicit balance. How much is too much? So take the time out to please like, share and subscribe. Please share this. This is some good stuff, guys. We're really talking on some good points. Oof. We have two powerful and very well capable ministers of the gospel and they are our own. Everybody, they are P-A-W, and we are so very proud of them, and they are giving good, good, good wisdom. Um, I wanted to um, have a, to, to kind of jump off a question from what uh, Evangelist Sharif said, and um, and it was dealing with, you know, unnecessary talk. Um, you know, me and Kyron was on, on this platform before we went live, and we were saying that, you know, there's just certain words that were just very crass. Um, that we hear across the pulpit. I mean, we know the, the gospel in and of itself is an offense, mm -hmm. right? And the word speaks of that. Um, and so um, is, and, and I guess I'm going to be very direct, uh, is PC speech, um, is PC speech uh, a, an enemy to the gospel of Jesus Christ? I don't personally think that PC speech is an enemy to the gospel of Christ, especially when you look at the calling and the place, the pulpit as being sacred. Mm -hmm. If we if we really look at it as a sacred calling and a sacred place where we're delivering the word of God, I wouldn't have barbershop talk right. in a sacred place. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very, very careful to take my pet peeves out of the pulpit. Mm -hmm. it, that's not the time in the arena for me to talk like Roger might talk to my best friend. Now, not saying that we're code switching, you know, theoretically as Christians, you know, my conversation should be the same everywhere I go, but I think everybody gets practically what I'm saying that yeah. the pulpit, the sanctity of the pulpit is as such that I have to be mindful. I have to be cognizant. I have to be in, in a place that, uh, that I become all things that I make win some to Christ. And so I don't think uh, being politically correct is compromising 
when you're preaching the unadulterated word of God. And I promise if we get back to the merits of the scriptures and start speaking, thus saith the Lord, instead of speaking from the, you know, the gospel according to Roger, yes, sir. Uh, I think God will begin to get glory and we'll get to see miracles, signs and wonders because nowhere do I see in the minor or the major prophets or the law, history, poetry, any of those where the man or the woman of God spoke directly what God said and God did not heal, deliver and set free. And so I think where we're getting caught in the weeds is we're getting into our own philosophies, our own pet peeves, mm -hmm. our own ideologies, as opposed to sticking with the merits of the text. Wow. Evangelist. I'm just going to say amen goes right there. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot add or take away from that. Yes, Elder. Man, this has been dynamic, y'all. This is this is rich, y'all. Again, I hope you've hit the share button. I hope you are. Somebody needs to hear this conversation. Yes. I hope you, amen. Somebody gets a different perspective of ministry from two very capable and anointed ministers of the gospel and, and uh, Pastor Green, as well as Evangelist Sheree Isabel. I want to shift gears, not too drastically, but, you know, Pastor Green, you were on to something about adding to it. All right. Um, there has been much conversation about this generation being bored or us having to do all this extra innovation to bring the word of God alive. All right. So I want to ask you this question because it appears as if you can't just preach, you know, on your on your screening device and draw a crowd. And so as a result, there's a whole lot of extras being added to it. You know, we illustrative you know preaching is a thing um technology innovation how much is too much as it relates to um the extras the additives that we think are necessary to reach a generation if i don't do this then my ministry won't be as engaging let's talk about that for a minute how much is too much what is the line on when ministry becomes it moves from being real and relevant to just being ridiculous y'all i'm gonna say this <laughs> one thing, one thing that I have observed in the body of Christ, we have gotten away from the power of prayer, mm. which in turn brings the power of the anointing. The we 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 forget sometimes that I, I'm all for um, being relevant. Um, technology is everywhere. So we have to be, uh, you know, we have to be up on as far as, uh, and it's, uh, sometimes I feel like I'm the least technological person there is. Y'all saw me trying to log in earlier, uh, but, but we, we have to be aware of these things. But at the same time, there is a, many people in the body of Christ. When I say the body, you know, I'm talking about all over. We have gotten away from that power of prayer. We forget that it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. The Bible didn't say nothing about your cute voice or you being able to sing or to rift and run. It didn't say nothing about you knowing about a whole bunch of Greek and Hebrew. That's good. We need all that. It didn't say um, that you know how to put videos and all that together. It's the anointing. And even the scripture um, I was reading the other day, told y'all God got me on this thing, you know, about fasting. My church is on consecration this week. Mm -hmm. and the, uh, But Jesus said, that, you know, they they brought the 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 the, the possessed child, and they was like, why come? How come we couldn't do that? Mm -hmm. He said, because this kind go, goeth but by prayer and but by fasting. And the church has gotten away from that. With some sometimes um, we we try to be so relevant, and we try to be so mm -hmm. you know uh, in with the crowd and going viral, we forget that without God, all this technology, lights, camera, action, it is absolutely nothing. If the anointing and the power, I don't care how mega your church is, how pretty your stained glass windows are, your padded, your, how good your band is. If there is a no, no anointing and there is no power of God flowing, we for Smith Wigglesworth and Catherine Coleman and all these, uh, the, the PAW bishops, the, the, uh, Bishop Wagner. I was watching some of his videos last week that God would just talk to. And they'll tell you, Bishop Wagner, I saw a video where he said doctors in his city would call him while they're operating on a case and say, Bishop, I need you to pray. And God would give him the direction for that for that surgeon and the person would survive. We've gotten but those men of God and women of God, Bishop, I don't lock a lot of those men and women of women of men and women of God. They spent time on their face in prayer, in the word and in the presence of God. And I don't think um, th this is just me now, y'all. This is my observation. I, I think the, the body, we've gotten away from that. 
you know, we don't, we don't really, you don't hear people, you, you just have prayer services now and you can hear a mouse running across the, the floor. It's so quiet. Mm -hmm. Don't right. nobody cry out to God anymore. Don't nobody uh, really seek God anymore. You know, and I know with the, with especially child with COVID and all this, we really can't gather like we did, but even pre COVID, you, you just didn't see uh, y'all. I can count probably on my hand services that was when I talk about the power of God was just whoosh like slain I mean I can probably count on my hand in the last 10 12 years of those type I, I think that's what we need to get back technology we need that you know I, I if anybody goes on my uh look at my social media page I made a post just today that talked about I didn't I don't go to church to be entertained I go to get God. Cut these lights on. Stop, <laughs> yeah. stop with these preachers' theatrics. All this foolishness. Yeah, and trust me, I know how. I know when the word get good. You modulate and all this. I, I understand about all that. I, I've done it. I've been. I've done it before. But give me Jesus. That's yeah. what the world is missing. Get live the life, the holiness. Don't nobody talk about holiness no more. Cause mm -hmm. you know you got still some people. They think it's all about clothes. They, but but it it, it go it reaches so far beyond that. You know when when you can't tell. And, I, and I'm not talking about clothes. I'm talking about your attitude and your spirit. When you cussing and doing everything what people on your job is doing, why am I going to go to your church and you doing the same thing what I'm doing? Why am I going to go to church and you in the same club I'm going to? Why? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm talking about that, that get, just getting back to that purity of holiness, that purity of seeking God. God will give you uh, ideas. I'm telling y'all, most of my successful ideas, God has given it to me in prayer. The radio station, other things, most of the majority, probably 90, 95 percent of my most successful things that I've had. God has given it to me in prayer. He'll give me something in prayer and I'll jump up and start working on it. And sure enough, he'll he'll put his hand on it. He'll bless that thing. So I, I think along with um, the technology, along with being relevant, along with reaching young people, the, 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 there was a scripture in the Bible. They say, where be the miracles of our fathers? Where, where are the Bishop Norman Wagner's? Mm. Where are the Bishop Iona the locks? Where, 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 who, who are the generals? Shall Bishop Reams just passed away. Who, where are the generals right. for this day and time? That'll be a voice in this generation. That's just my humble two cents of what I think of What's going on in the world today? No, it's I'm sorry, Elder Green. I'm sorry. That thing I feel no, no, no. You you stirred something up in me because is there it, one in the comments right now? The doors are open. Right. Is there one? <laughs> I mean, that, that stirs something in me because you know, when, when I think about it, that's something that I struggle with a lot. Those of you that know me know my background in production. And mm -hmm. so uh I always want to make sure there's a great production value. But when I look at production value, I, I always want to make sure that there is a good uh, sacred and theological value that supersedes mm. that. And I believe right now what's going on, Pastor Kyron, is God is starting to uh, send a direct impartation to a lot of us throughout the world. And I'll say that again. God is giving an impartation to us through a lot of us around the world. And it didn't just start right now. It started 10, 15, 20 years ago. You know, when I take it back to my my original pastor, uh, uh, Bishop, uh, Bishop Edward C. Roberts in Charlotte, North Carolina, every year he would bring the finest of the wheat to our city. And so from Bishop Norman Wagner to Bishop uh, Monroe Sanders, from Bishop uh, uh, Paul Bowers, who was our diocese for about 20 years, uh, to Bishop Ross Paddock, all of these great men of God. And when I got my driver's license, Bishop uh, Roberts would allow me to drive them around. And mm -hmm. so I got a firsthand theological degree from just driving them men and women of God around. And I wasn't talking a lot. I was listening. Yes, and so I'm, I want to talk to every young person and every not so young person out there. Get to listening to some of these great men and women of God as they begin to pour wisdom into us, because as good as, good as God is to us, they are not living forever. And what they're doing is they're passing down, they're imparting things into us. But this is going to come through our prayer, our fasting, our intercession. I, I, I am a firm believer that technology is great. But who says that we can't be on a Facebook Live and just listen to somebody teach? If you don't believe that, listen to Dr. Lamont Turner. You yes. can just sit there yes. with limited technology yes. and listen to him all day long. 
If you don't yeah. believe it, listen to Serving Bishop Sean Tyson. Listen to uh, you know Bishop I on a lock in the past. Uh, 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 Freedom Morrison, so many others, right. uh, David Hollis. It, it, the word can be given in a way that technology is not a distraction, but it comes with us having a hunger for prayer, a hunger for the word, digging into our word. Most of our young people now, I've noticed, don't even have a study Bible. They don't even know what a concordance is. They don't even know what uh, a, a dictionary uh, is. Uh, you know, I, I, these are things that I think that all of us need to have. And I've went back and I've gotten uh, a lot of these materials for some of the men and women of old. And I've just locked myself in the room and just prayed and fast and, and wanted to hear from God. And I believe when we start seeing that, we'll see miracles, signs and wonders. I'll say Amen. this one thing and I'll let it go. I started with a partner of mine, uh, Elder uh, Adrian Wright in Charlotte, North Carolina. We were both at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. And God touched us to start a campus ministry. We started a campus ministry in our dorms with about three, four, five, ten young people. And that thing grew to thousands in two years. We had people from colleges from all over the East Coast getting saved, delivered, filled with the Holy Ghost. We were taking them to our local churches, whether it was in Charlotte and Greensboro and Baltimore in Atlanta. And God just spurred a revival. We didn't know a lot of word. We didn't know a lot of protocol. We didn't know a lot of nothing. But all we had was a sincere heart and God began to feel. So I want to talk to somebody out there that has that burning desire saying, God, I don't have a name. God, I'm not running revivals. I ain't got no website. I ain't got no business cards. But I have a deep passion inside of me to see souls saved, healed, delivered, and set free. And I pray that the power of the Holy Ghost yes, begins to recharge you. I pray mm -hmm. that the power of the Holy Ghost begins to synergize with other like believers. I pray that the power of the Holy Ghost begins to put you in places that you can change the very foundation and the fabric of this country. Wow. My God. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Yes, Can God. The church say amen. Amen and amen. We're only 40 minutes in. We got 20 minutes left. Oh my God. <laughs> I hope you all are enjoying tonight's amen special presentation, the IPYP Alumni Hour. Amen. We thank God for evangelists. Amen. Sheree Isabel, Pastor Roger Green. Amen. I'm kicking it. Amen. Also, our programming director, Elder Stuart Styles the third. Hit the share button, y'all. Hit the like button. Um, I hope that you're enjoying the dialogue. Amen. We can have constructive conversations without tearing people down. So if you amen. can't expect, amen. You can't expect any other thing, that's not what we're about here in IPYPU. But the are so many things that we can learn. I'm going to pivot to you, um, Elder Stewart, because you yeah. represent the next generation, you know, yeah. of, of young ministers and stuff like that that are to come. You know, tell me what, what it is. I mean, what is that balance? I mean, we have seen the church go dark. You know, we have seen, you know, um, we have seen the trends and impressions of and our worship experiences that we are borrowing from other examples. Help me understand what is it that, you know, how can we effectively appeal to a generation, amen, without necessarily, you know, compromising, you know, uh, uh, you know, the sanctity of our worship experience? Um, one, one thing, um, uh, first, um, uh, shout out to my pastor, Pastor Eric Battle at the House of Deliverance Church. Um, and, and, and my church, we don't really have a lot of lights. We Well, we don't have like lights or uh, we, have, of course, we have cameras and TVs, of course, but we don't have a lot of fanfare when it comes to our worship. Um, and the one thing that, and, and, and a lot of people have young, more so younger people like 30s and 20s and uh, some college age kids are coming in. The reason why they are coming in is because of authenticity and consistency. Mm. Um, oftentimes, we we know when you're running a game. Right. We know it. And it's like, I, and, I, and, I, and I can't stress that enough. We know when it's a gimmick. We're not, we're, this generation and younger are some of the most uh, uh, intelligent, uh, socially inept, people that you'll ever meet in your entire life and we know what happens uh we know we know what happens when you're shutting down the lights or if, if you're if you're doing all these things and not to not to take away from anyone who uses lights or anything i'm it's just like something i just thought of at that point but um pr pretty much authenticity and consistency uh 
shuns away gimmicks. It shuns away games. And it also allows people to see the real you on and off the pulpit, mm -hmm. you know? And so I think um, for us as young people, especially young preachers, um, yes, we're trying to find ourselves, try to find our voice. But one, for me, I've always had good, authentic, consistent examples. Awesome. And it made me want to follow in that same path. It's unfortunate that now we have leaders that are so inconsistent um, and are so up and down and they change just as fast as the trend. There's no there, there there's no sure sound. The the trumpet is giving off unsure sound. You're a C sharp today and now you're a D flat tomorrow. I mean, mm -hmm. there is no consistent sound. I can't recognize it. Okay. And so if I can't recognize it, I can't follow it. Wow, that's powerful. That's that's powerful. I think the, I think the, the 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 crossroads that the church is in is that we realize that progression is needed, innovation is needed. And we know that we have to step our games up so that we don't look like a homely, you know, it's OK to put some investments in some things to, you know, <laughs> you know, to put a fresh coat of paint on the wall. Uh, <laughs> but authenticity, what, what ends up happening is you get a manufactured anointing and you yeah. get a production that, that produces no deliverance. Yes, sir. And nothing that's really tangible that you can hold on to when you're dealing with, you know, the things in life. And I think that's probably one of the things of concern is there's a, there's a generation that's a disadvantage because, you know, we we're doing in ministry, we're doing in we're doing ministry to impress and not ministry to leave a living leave an impression. Hopefully yes. I, I messed that up. No, I like okay, that. We got, I got you. We got you. We yeah. got you. Yeah. And you I will say um, if you're in the comments right now, if you guys have a question, please post your question. We would love to uh, talk to you all. This is a this is a round table conversation. If yeah. you, you may be at your you may be at your couch, but guess what? You're at the table. Okay. So please, so uh, if you guys have a question, post it in the comments. We'd love to have a conversation with you all. Yeah, and, and I, at least in this next question, how do we embrace ministry that's different without demonizing it? Like, there's a difference between there are some there are some who are just call for this time and age. Nah, I, I, let's just be honest. When Ty and them came on the, on the scenes, it was like, whoa, shock, whoa, yeah. you know, you know what I mean? Um, when do you think of even Diedrich, you know, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm pulling on those who are, you know, part of the apostolic faith that we've known right. growing up. I mean, we've seen their evolution in ministry. You know, some would consider them controversial, but it was different. Why, why is it that we have this propensity sometimes um, to block progression? Or what is it that you're looking for in progression that helps us with this concept of explicit and imbalance? You evangelist. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's human nature um, that people, it, it's like anything that they don't understand or that's new to them. The first thing that they want to do is criticize it. Mm. But again, I think that's probably where um, your personal growth, because I kind of, I kind of, because I, I just grew, I grew up old school, hardcore, apostolic, Pentecostal. And, it, you know, it was a quote they used to say, well, if it's new, then it ain't true. <laughs> well, you know, I got older. I was like, well, that's not entirely right. And it's not entirely fair. Because going back to my early mm -hmm. example, Jesus didn't do everything the exact same way. Right. Uh, and I think that's where um, your people's personal maturity and personal growth would have to come into play. Because uh, I know the Lord had to grow me up with that. Like, you know, just because it's, it's new to you or it's different, that doesn't mean God is not in it. You know, now I think this is probably where that that uh, what what we used to call the Moses generation, uh, the Moses generation. I think that's where they, uh, again, have to reevaluate, reevaluate some things and, and say, you know, really question, qu question themselves before God. You know, why am I against it? You know, if they're preaching the word of God, singing the word of God. OK, so maybe they pop lock or do whatever a little bit more than what, what we used to. But but, you know, I, I've been in services. Uh, and, and, and feel the power of God, feel the anointing. That's what I look for. You know, it, it, it's God's presence there. Now, I have been in, in events and services. It was pure foolishness. It was just a good show. It, I mean, hey, because I mean, we, we recognize the spirit of God. We recognize his presence. And then I have been in services and, and at events, concerts or whatnot. It didn't move me, but I'm seeing people blessed all around. And yeah. I said, well, okay, God, that wasn't for me, but thank you for blessing my sister. Thank you yeah. for blessing uh, th those that was at this event. So I think um, our, our personal maturity, our personal growth 
Uh, you don't have to put your mouth on everything that comes out. You know, sometimes it's good just to sit back and say, Lord, just reveal to me if this is of you, yeah. I'm all right with it. You know, that's, but that's something we have to do personally. You know, uh, I don't know how we'll get to that level corporately, but personally, we have to do that. You know, ask God. As, right. Sometimes we just making snap judgments and snap calls on individuals and you, the Lord ain't said nothing. God's hand is on them. We have to be careful. You borderline mm -hmm. blaspheming. You're God. Hand, God's hand is all over this individual, all over their work. There, there are some people, even personally, I pray. For, I don't necessarily follow their ministry uh, very close. And I may not give them not one dollar, but I pray for them. <laughs> you know, it probably sounded bad. <laughs> I probably said more wisdom with right. that. But I pray for them because I, I see God's hand on them and I want them to be successful. And we have to get rid of that. If, if, if Pastor Short, if your church is booming, it make me look good. I'm like, mm -hmm. that's my brother. Yeah, mm -hmm. he he out there on the West Coast. He's doing some things out there. You know, it's just, it, 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 it's it's like some of our mentalities, you know, if it ain't me doing it, then it ain't right. If mm -hmm. the Lord didn't give me this idea, then it can't be God. Well, God can use whom he wants to. He have mercy on who he wants to. You know, just, I, I, I think personal growth. Y'all yeah. grow up. Girl, grow up in Jesus. I see a question. <laughs> that was good. I love you, Sheree. Oh, I, I see a, a question in the audience. Okay, so question. How do you innovate? How, how, how do innovative, I'm sorry, how do innovative and creative people break in with a very religious environment? Not religious in the sense of identity, but religious in repetition. The same thing mm. over and over again. Yeah, uh, you know, so oftentimes, especially in our churches, um, our our traditions do block do mm -hmm. block uh, in, in, in innovation. I'm, I'm sure we've been victims of that as well. Yeah. Um, uh, Pastor Green, do you think you can uh, answer that? Yeah, I think it's no quick fix. Uh, I know that's not the answer that everybody wants to hear, but when you talk about tradition, you talk about culture, mm -hmm. and so cultures don't change overnight. And so you have to be very careful, number one, with the culture. Number one, you have to identify who are the change agents within that culture. There are different power leaders, uh, power brokers within in every culture. And so instead of kicking against those power brokers, find out ways to collaborate, find out ways to partner, and then gradually begin to dismantle those yes. things through some of those people. You know, I have an old country dad that say you, you can catch more flies with honey than you can with salt. And so you have to be able to be in a, in a way that allow your creativity for, for most people. They don't necessarily gravitate to the creativity because, number one, fear and jealousy, yes, Absolutely, yeah. fear and jealousy. Number one, fear of nobody wants to be the one that lets uh unholiness in on their watch <laughs> come on you know? so they think yeah. and so the fear of it is like you know no let's not do it because i don't want to be the one that let down the standard on my watch so that fear you're battling and then number two is jealousy sometimes the jealousy of i didn't come up with the idea and god's working through you and so since i didn't come up with the idea i squash it and say nah we ain't doing that here and so you have to be able to understand those dynamics and be wise enough to say, OK, I see where this is coming from. Let me perhaps stroke somebody's ego here. Let me perhaps uh, give it in a way that this person can vividly see it without making it seem like we're tearing everything down on this way. So it, there's a, a great degree of wisdom. A lot of what I've been able to accomplish in my council and some of the older saints will tell you is because I'm very wise with how I deliver it. I'm first and foremost uh, going to give homage to the past. I'm first Absolutely. and foremost going to pay homage to what we've already given the foundation. I'm first and foremost going to be gracious and loving to those that have poured into us before. But then I'm going to be candid and honest and say, you know, these are the ways that we can come up. And this is why we need to come up. And this is how we need to come up. And mm -hmm. so in short, I think it's just wisdom and love and being patient enough to yes. see the things happen in a way that God will unfold. And you know, Amen. I think there's a, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I, I was going to say, I think, and, and, I, and I believe that we have got to learn to work within the systems. Sometimes it's so easy to jump out of it. 
because you think you'll be embraced in another reformation or be embraced in another movement. I think it's important for us to realize that we've had some power brokers within our organization who were implicit in what they did, explicit in what they did. I would call Bishop Arthur Brazier mm -hmm. innovative ahead of his time within the PAW. Mm -hmm. I would call Bishop Wagner innovative. Yes. I would sure. call Bishop R.W. McMurray, you know, for innovative. sure. I mean, so the idea that you have to leave the organization or that there's only you can only go to this reformation because they're the ones who, you know, uh, uh, um, are, are exploiting innovation or taking things next level. I think, you know, the scripture says there's nothing new under the sun. I think we have to learn those of us who remain have to challenge even those who are with us to see it differently. So sorry. about Can, that. I, can I interject Please. something, Pastor mm -hmm. Kyron? Yeah. What you said was just, just amazing. It made me think of this is one thing that I had to resolve within my mind. And that's one, one part of it. Your mentality has to be correct in order to do this. I often say that winners don't become winners in reality until they become winners in mentality. And so you got to change some of this stinking thinking. And when I really, really made a resolve that I firmly believe that my leader is a man of God or a woman of God, what that caused me to believe is if I pray, they will hear from God. Yes, sir. <laughs> Y'all ain't gonna hear me. Yes, sir. Yeah. If I truly believe my leader is a man or a woman of God, if I pray, they will hear from God. And what I noticed is some things that God placed on my heart five, 10 years ago. I just begin to pray on it and I begin to see God change some things. And, you know, I even saw it through the pandemic, things that I wanted to do within our council for years. You know, I was just praying on it. God sends a pandemic and then they come to me and say, so what's that technology? So it's your fault. Right. You know, what's, what's those <laughs> things that we need? And so God has a way of doing things because he's sovereign. He's in control. He's yes. subject to none. And I think we forget that sometimes we think that others are in control and it will never happen. But God is sovereign and he'll cause things to happen in the fullness of his time. Yeah. yeah. And how could, you know, and, and someone just put up now, how could we forget Bishop David Ellis? You oh, know, yes, Bishop, sir. The Bishop Noel Jones. Come yes, on, y'all. I mean, yes, sir. I go back and think of, you know, even evangelist, you know, Ann Story Pratt. Like, here's a young woman breaking barriers in our organization. Howard and Tillman. When Howard Tillman. You know what I mean? So we we have a, so when I think of what other people are doing, especially in apostolic faith, because we love to compare ourselves against ourselves. You know, a lot of the progression of innovation have come from an organization and we've got to learn to work within it. We got to learn to keep pushing forward and seeing the change. I commend when I look out and I see what my good friend Pastor Cam is doing down in uh, Charlotte, you know, oh, Pastor right. James up in Indianapolis, Pastor Chris Foster out in California, Nissan Stewart. Yeah. I mean, just to name a few. I mean, we've got to just learn, y'all, to be, you know, patient in this season, but keep pushing the envelope. And I'm sure in due time, people will catch up, you yes. know. Our time is almost up, y'all. And I know we can go on and on and on about this, you know, conversation as it relates to implicit balance. Um, I wanted to end on just a, a laugh if possible, because we know that one of our amen fellow comrades didn't have a, their finest moment of ministry. But I would ask this question to both our panelists. Can you give me an embarrassing moment of ministry? <laughs> oh, this is oh Lord. Um, oh my I think this is a fair question because you know, oftentimes we like to give this uh this false veil of perfection, especially in leadership. And so, like, you know, accomplished ministers of the gospel like yourself, I come up, we know like make me feel good and know that I, I'm not the only one that mess up over the pool. Like what type of mess up? Oh, what like, type okay, of mess so I'll give this example, right? You know, as a young pastor, right? Um, I was preaching a funeral. And I'm telling you, I was in like ninth gear. I think I had modulated. I was up to my 10th modulation. <laughs> and in the midst of it, my pants fell down. Oh, geez. <laughs> and very quickly, I had to maneuver, like, you know, <laughs> get them back up. But <laughs> Okay. So everybody uh, has them. So I'm like, wow. <laughs> so just a few weeks, I was preaching uh, a few weeks ago. And don't y'all tell Lily and Lloyd on me because y'all know she get on her sisters. <laughs> so, you know, I got my little hair on. I done, thought I done did everything to make it secure or whatnot. Oh, my. So, uh, like Pastor Kyron. Now, I don't know if the Saints. Well, no, I got one even better. No, nah, I'm going to take it back. No, nah, this this was probably um, this was probably back uh, three or four years ago. We had just got back. Uh, I was with Bobby Jones. We had just got back from doing the jazz festival. And I was preaching in West Tennessee, uh, a, a little church there. Our church is part of our council. 
and I uh, had my hair on. You know, sisters is always our hair, women ministers out there. Uh, <laughs> so I had my little hair on. I thought I'm fixed it, unglued it, and fried and dyed, laid it to the side. So I'm preaching and I'm preaching. <sighs> this is really embarrassing. But as I'm <laughs> preaching, I'm feeling my wig slowly <laughs> peel back. It's peeling back. <laughs> and so I'm preaching. I'm I'm in gear, Elder Kyra. And so I just pulls it forward. I pull it forward. <laughs> but you know what? And, and two of my little god goddaughters, they were there and that tickled them so bad. I mean, it literally like peeled back. And I'm preaching in gear. <laughs> but guess what? Six souls got the Holy Ghost that night. So oh my god. Man, oh my god. Pulling back. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Amen. Pastor wow. Green, man. Any less flattering moments? <laughs> I got sure. way too many for this broadcast. Uh, wardrobe <laughs> malfunctions, all of those things. But one of one of the things that stick out to me, it was one uh council session, and, and I was preaching, and I thought I was doing my good preaching. You know, I was hooping and modulating, as Pastor Kyron said, and, and and I had a few work colleagues and a few people that came. Uh, for the service. And, you know, I thought I did my good preaching. And so I thought I laid them out. And so I went to one lady in particular. I said, you know, thank you for coming, you know, in in my deep convention voice. Thank you for coming. God bless you. I, you know, I hope God really bless you. And she, you know, uh, she took a little deep gulp. Um, um, uh, I say, how did you enjoy it? Um, I really didn't understand all that screaming you was doing. <laughs> and she said, the message just really, you know, kind of went over my head. Mm-hmm. She said, but, you know, thanks for letting me come. And so that was an embarrassing moment because it was one of those moments that showed me I needed to spend more time on content than the presentation of it. And so often, oftentimes when we get caught up in certain things, it just embarrasses us because what I've learned in ministry is the time that you thought you really preached, you probably didn't do as great as you thought you right. did. And the time you thought you did terrible is the time that it blessed the folk the most. And so uh, ministry is just Man. funny like that. And so I'm, I, I'm just, it's just hilarious. Wow. <laughs> Elder Stewart, I know you got songs, man. <laughs> oh, um, you know what? God has just been so favorable to me. Where... Oh, food. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I really I'm really embarrassed to say this because it makes me feel like I'm not I'm not saved. Um uh I was all right, so to preface, I was reading, I was reading something that i was reading an article by uh uh a well-known minister of a well-known minister of the nation of islam and i was re- <laughs> and to preface it and, and the same day i watched the malcolm x movie preface it, right just give y'all the- no way, homie. <laughs> Yo, I was so bad. I was out and I went into worship. I went at that same like be like that day or the same or the next day. I was uh at church and I was like, you know, getting the people into worship, you know, and say he's Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Sikhnu. And I don't know what happened, but I said Allah. Oh, <laughs> no, oh the blood, the blood of Jesus. <laughs> You better start speaking in some tongues. The blood. Wow. I don't know what happened, but I, I was like, oh, Lord. I, That's I, I, you know, when you mess up like that, it's a long way to your seat. It's a- <laughs> Jesus. So Jesus. Wow. That, y'all, I'm saved. I believe in Jesus, but it's just, it happened. <laughs> Man, Pastor Mike, if you're out there watching, you know, we've all had embarrassing moments in ministry. But now this has been a wonderful conversation, you know, explicit balance. Amen. 
uh, the goal of tonight's conversation was <laughs> they let me have it. <laughs> you have it. You're fired. <laughs> Look, man. The goal of tonight's conversation is have a constructive conversation about things in the kingdom. And I appreciate y'all being with us, launching this IPYP Alumni Hour. There's more to come, y'all, with the Alumni Association. I want you to do me a favor. Again, if you have not done already, hit the share button, hit the like button, hit the love button. Um, but most importantly, give a gift. Amen. The IPYP Alumni Association, we exist so that we can be a branch uh, to those uh, who have served, as well as those who will become future IPYP alumni. And uh, our goal and endeavor is to make sure that young people who desire uh, to continue education can do so. We have an annual scholarship. I'm so glad to announce that we have recently added one scholarship in addition to the Pastor Tim Starkey Award, the Bishop Norman L. Wagner Award, uh, the Pastor uh, uh, Todd Bell Award. We also have added now the the Outstanding Female in Ministry Award for the late Dr. Iona Locke, uh, who was our former IPYP Vice President and uh, uh, from California, so <laughs> or Midwest, but she was out in California. But nevertheless, we thank God for that. And so I want everybody that has a chance to give. You can give via a cash app or or push pay, um, or you go out to the IPYP app and you can give us a gift or a seed somewhere out there. It fits in your heart. Amen. Let's be a blessing to the next generation. Uh, let's shower them with support and encouragement as we endeavor to be all things to our young people and help them, amen, in their spiritual maturation. And uh, we're excited about it. We were able to give away, amen, uh, uh, the scholarships award this past year in the midst of a pandemic. And that was because of your giving. So I want to challenge every pastor, everybody that's been blessed by the IPYP growing up. If you enjoyed tonight's conversation, do me a favor, y'all. Let's support, amen, evangelist Sheree Isabel. She's got some projects. She's got a uh, gospel music radio station. She's got some things going on. She's out there in a museum out there in Tennessee. Pull up. <laughs> She's yeah, about, to, she's about to open up a McDonald's. Uh, <laughs> well, Chick Fil A, Chick Fil A, Chick Fil A, Chick Fil A, Chick -fil -A and Holiness and Holiness. Yes, yes. <laughs> but check her out. I mean, all of her social media handles are out there. And I'm yeah, I, sure knew, I knew Frida was gonna say that. I'm gonna say you, you messed up, man. You okay. know she's from yeah, Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah. Like you know she was born in Pennsylvania. Like. <laughs> 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 and then also support a man pastor roger green we thank god for you being with us tonight yeah. again out of charlotte north carolina author tremendous speaker y'all look you both will be blessed if you have them in your councils if you have yes. them in your local assemblies y'all i believe in pushing our own these two are some of the best that we have as it relates to their ability to expose the word of god and to impart there it is hold it up man the journey amen <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Certainly find him. I'm sure he's on Amazon. Those other places you can buy your books. Amen. Let's support our own. It's been an honor, y'all, just having this conversation. Thanks for helping us get this kicked off, y'all. The alumni hour, explicit balance. We got to make sure, y'all, we're not doing too much in ministry. Amen. I have myself. Amen. Uh, uh, Evangelist Morse, our predecessor, Maris Morrison, our president. Amen. Yeah. Elder Stewart, we say God bless you. Pastor Green, Evangelist Isabel, God bless you all. God have a good night, everybody. Thank you. God bless y'all. Yeah.